There are two reasons why I asked for this adjournment debate. First, the Housing Minister declined to call in a planning decision in my constituency where 99 social homes for rent will be lost in a big regeneration scheme. Second, in the recent budget, which was meant to be the housing budget, the Chancellor never mentioned social homes for rent once. The two are linked. The Social Housing Association that will deliver the regeneration on Fox Hill in my constituency is being forced to act like a private developer because no public subsidies are given and the regeneration must be self-funding. 70% of the new homes built on the site will be sold privately directly. The remaining 30% are split between social homes for rent and a shared ownership scheme. And here is where it becomes intransparent. The government puts the two together, and yet there is a world of difference between the two. Thousands of families will never be able to put down a deposit, deposit even for a shared ownership home. All they can afford is a decent home for rent. Yet the numbers of homes built for social rent has fallen dramatically. Government statistics show that in 2010 and 11, nearly 40,000 social homes for rent were built. In 2016-17, that figure is just 5,380. Mm -hmm. In the same financial year, 2016 and 17, 12,383 council homes were sold under the right to buy scheme. Year in, year out, the number of social homes for rent is being reduced. On that point, would the Honourable Lady just give way? I am happy to give way. I, I thank you for giving way. And would she accept that one of the problems with the way in which the government currently deals with those authorities, like my own in Stroud, which actually own the stock, is that it puts an artificial cap on borrowing, mm -hmm. but worse than that, for every house sold, 70% still goes back to the Treasury. That cannot be fair, can it? The Honourable Member is making um, a, a very valid point. Um, in the Budget, it was also announced that um, there would actually be, um, finally, a lift of the cap for lo local authorities and the um, housing re revenue account, but only in high-demand areas, and it has not been clarified, actually, how you apply for being in a high-demand area. So that makes it very difficult for, social housing, uh, for, for, for local councils. People on low income, people working on zero-hour contracts, People on universal credit, they have increasingly nowhere to go except into social housing, which exists as a safety net provided by the state for people who are just about managing. Would the really give way? I'm happy to give way. Madam Deputy Speaker, I thank the Honourable Lady for giving way, and, and, and I sought her permission to do so beforehand. Uh, First of all, does the Honourable Lady agree with me that there is a real need for every constituency, because this applies to every constituency for social housing, with decent rent that is fit for purpose, and further, this need for appropriate housing has been magnified by the implementation of the bedroom tax, which sees families being penalised because the local authority has no available housing to fit the family. So would the Honourable Lady agree, further agree that there must be immediate steps taken to meet this need, or see this tax lifted from those who would move to a smaller house, but who are unable to do so? due to the lack of appropriate housing in their area? Um, I uh, completely agree with the Honourable Member. Uh, I remember it was actually um, the coalition government um, who started with this bedroom tax. I was a council member um, in a local authority <coughs> where it became very obvious how unfair mm -hmm. this tax was, particularly because the local authority did not have the houses to rehouse people into smaller ac accommodation. It was just really a penalty for people who are already struggling, so I totally agree. If this government thinks that this safety net, net is working just fine, the safety net of social homes, Grenfell Tower stands as a tragic example that it isn't. And today the Homelessness Charity Shelter has given the facts and figures for homelessness and those in temporary accommodation just of now. Their report reveals a trend that is getting worse each year, a shocking one, uh, 128,000 children in Britain will wake up homeless and in temporary accommodation this Christmas. Shame. That is one in every 111 children in this country and their parents living in emergency B&Bs and hostels 
widely considered by experts in this field to be the worst type of temporary accommodation. Let's be clear. One in every 111 children in Britain wouldn't be living in emergency B&Bs or hostels this Christmas if there was more social housing. And all the government's talk about affordable homes doesn't house a single one of these children and their parents. We know that this government believes in the private sector and home ownership. But this is an unattainable dream for millions and millions of people. We need an effective supply of homes to rent in this country. The private sector can be part of the solution, but it is staggering that this government resists proposals and fails to effectively support new social homes for rent. Why is this? I ask the Minister whether this is an ideological position he and his government are taking. If it isn't, then why not give local authorities and social housing associations the tools and the finance to provide what their community is asking for? Uh, I'm happy to give way. I thank the Honourable Member for giving way. Um, <clears throat> one of the problems we have in Scotland, as the Honourable Member will know, is the housing debt that Scottish local authorities are, are, are landed with. It's like a huge colossus, and we spend our time trying to service this debt, and, uh, which gets in the way of building houses for people who need it, as, as the Honourable Member says. So I, I, I do hope that at some stage Her Majesty's Government could look at getting rid of this housing debt, which is crippling and is standing in the way of, of homes for people who need them. My honourable friend is making a, a very good point. Um, in fact, that was the reason why now 50% of um, um, local authorities do no longer own their social housing stock because they were encouraged um, to give it over to social housing associations in order to write off yep, that sorry. historic yep, debt. Yep. But that has created other problems, um, and, 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 and this is exactly what I'm talking about um, tonight. Let me talk briefly about Fox Hill and my constituency as an example. My housing association tells me that what they need from government in order to increase the number of social homes is non-recoverable grant funding. Recoverable loans will not serve this purpose. The Homes and Communities Agency's grant funding under the National Affordable Housing Programme does not provide funding for new social homes to rent over and above those required by Section 106 agreements. However, funding is available for affordable rent <coughs> and shared ownership. In a high-value area such as Bath, where affordability is a particular issue for local residents, converting homes to social rent, which would otherwise be sold on the open market, requires a significant level of grant in the region of around £200,000 for a house worth £350,000 mm -hmm. if it was sold on the private market. Mm -hmm. As I have already said, my housing association cannot get this grant funding. What is the result for the people who live on Fox Hill? There are, of course, some who are set to benefit from the replacement of their post-war units to modern units. But for residents who have been encouraged to buy their own homes under the right to buy and have done so, they now face the prospect of having their homes and their neighbourhoods destroyed, something they never asked for and never expected to happen. And what about the 99 most vulnerable families who will now simply be moved out of their home city of Bath? They cannot stay because there will be 99 less social homes for rent under the current plans. It is this sort of, this sort of social cleansing that is unacceptable and gives the government the reputation of being very uncaring. The Minister will know that I requested him to call in the planning decision that reduced the number of social homes for rent by 99. He refused the call-in. The implication is that this reduction in social homes for rent is in line with government policy. On Monday, the Secretary of State, in a quick reply, said it wasn't government policy to reduce the number of social homes to rent. It can't be both in this specific instant. So what is the answer? Let me return to the budget. The Chancellor announced a stamp duty reduction for first-time buyers. This might help the few, but not the many. They announced a lifting of the borrowing cap on lo local authorities in high demand areas. Mm -hmm. This is of no new, uh, use in areas in my high demand constituency of Bath, where the local authority has long since transferred its local housing stock uh, to the housing association. And this lifting of the borrowing cap does not apply to them. I ask the government to come clean on their plans for social homes. 
On Monday, the Secretary of State confirmed, as I suspected, that the government has no plan for social housing. There is no strategy, no policies. Rather, they have walked away from their responsibility to the poorest and most vulnerable, handing it all back to cash-strapped local authorities. Mm. And to cover their really? failure, they conflate social housing with affordable housing and hope no one will notice. Madam Deputy Speaker, we need to be perfectly clear. Affordable housing and social homes for rent are two very different things. It's time to change policy and to get building tens of th thousands of new social homes for rent and deliver a regeneration scheme for my constituents on Fox Hill that meet their needs. Thank you. Yeah. Minister. Madam Deputy Speaker, um, may I start by uh, congratulating the Honourable Member for Bath for securing this important debate on social housing. And I'm extremely pleased she's called it because um, I think it's important to set out what the Government is actually doing in terms of fixing the broken housing market. Uh, but also particularly as uh, she is keen to talk about uh, social housing. And let me be very, very clear, Madam Deputy Speaker, providing safe, secure, affordable homes for those who need them most is an absolute priority for this Government. And if I, uh, she's talk, the Honourable Lady has talked about some statistics, well, let me uh, give her some. Since 2010, over 357,000 new affordable homes have been delivered, including around 128,000 homes for social rent. Our recent announcement of an extra £2 billion for the Affordable Homes Programme takes a total budget to £9 billion over 2016 to 2021. And this will help to deliver a wide range of affordable housing, including social rent homes. Now, um, I think I would just say gently to the Honourable Lady that um, uh, I don't think it's fair to say that somehow this government doesn't care about uh, social housing or people who live in social housing, and I will talk a little bit more about that. But what I would say is that you know, don't take my word for it, but listen to what people in the social housing sector themselves have been saying. So David Orr, who is the chief executive of the National Housing Federation, described the extra funding that's been announced as, and I quote, Madam Deputy Speaker, a watershed moment for the nation. Yes, of course. Um, could I then encourage him to please explain to local authority and to social housing associations very clearly in very clear terms how this mechanism of um, delivering those social homes in local authorities is actually going to work and do it very quickly, please. Minister. Uh, well, Madam I, I, I will uh, address some of these issues, but what I would say to her is that we have a constant dialogue with uh, housing associations and, of course, local councils. But let me set out some of the things that have been announced recently which will help in making sure that more affordable and social homes uh, at the end of the day are, are built. Um, so the other uh, uh, aspect of announcement in recent weeks, of course, has been the rent certainty for social housing providers. And I can tell the Honourable Lady from the conversations that I've had with the sector, uh, many people who, who run uh, housing associations, indeed councils, um, they are clear this is something that's extremely welcome. It will help to deliver more homes faster whilst, of course, also providing funding for maintaining the current stock of homes that are in place right now. <clears throat> and I, I have to say that this budget uh, was the biggest for housing in decades, an extra £15 billion of support, meaning at least £44 billion of support for housing over the next five years. And I think this is going to provide a big boost for housing across the country. Um, and, of course... Uh, the Chancellor also announced the decision to increase the local authority housing revenue account borrowing caps by a total of a billion pounds targeted at areas of high affordability pressure. Collectively, Madam Deputy Speaker, these decisions herald a boost for the building of social homes. But of course, we know there's more to do. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Giveaway. I, I must press this point about housing debt. Um, in the last financial year, the Highland Council's financial housing debt was of the order of £205 million. What that means is 40 pence out of every pound that's received to rents goes to service this debt. And surely the Minister will see that that is crippling attempts to build new houses. Can I ask the Minister what discussions he's had with the Chancellor to try and get rid of this debt? <coughs> uh, but Madam Minister, uh, obviously um, um, the uh, Honourable Gentleman uh, represents a, a Scottish seat. Uh, 
uh, and uh, housing is a devolved matter. Um, but what I would say, since we talk about housing revenue accounts, uh, there is headroom uh, as at 2016-17 uh, year-end of £3.5 billion of headroom across the country in housing revenue accounts. And I know that councils are looking to build more homes. Uh, they are also working with, for, with housing associations. And I do think this extra money uh, in terms of the increase in headroom will make a difference. Um, the Honourable Lady talked about uh, Grenfell and, of course, an absolute tragedy uh, for the country. And subsequent to this uh, uh, tragedy, the Prime Minister asked that I meet with social housing tenants across the country to hear their views on social housing. I have now met with over 600 tenants from across the country. I have undertaken seven events, the latest being uh, in Bridgewater last week, which is not too far from the Honourable Lady's constituency. And by the end of January, Madam Deputy Speaker, I will have undertaken a further five such engagement events. And the views of social housing tenants will inform the national approach that we will be setting out in the Social Housing Green Paper, which we aim to publish in spring next year. And I just want to record uh, my grateful thanks to all the tenants that I've met for sharing their experiences. And this engagement tour has undoubtedly been one of the best things that I've ever done in my time as a minister. And it's very clear to me from these visits that when it comes to fixing our broken housing market, it's not just about building more homes, it's also about improving the housing we already have. The budget committed £400 million in loans for estate regeneration, on top of the £322 million that has already been made available. And the current programme is supporting over 100 estates around the country. And I'm very pleased to see that the Fox Hill Estate, uh, which of course is in the Honourable Lady's constituency to which she referred, is amongst them and received £650,000 in capacity grant funding. Now, yes, sure. I thank him for, for, for giving way again. Uh, what will he say to the 99 families who will not be housed in Bath because they will basically have to move out, outside Bath because that's the only way um, for them um, to find um, a home for rent? That is what we call social cleansing. What will you say to these families? Let me, let me come on uh, to talk about specifically the issues of uh, the Fox Hill Estate redevelopment. But I want to be clear that the Government is committed to putting councils and communities in the driving seat when it comes to their housing needs. And this was reinforced by the Estate Regeneration National Strategy published last year, which emphasised the need to engage residents and give council and housing association tenants the choice to return to their estate or other suitable housing options. Now, specifically in terms of Fox Hill Estate, there are currently 414 affordable homes uh, on the estate. I understand the, propo the proposed redevelopment taken together with affordable homes proposed at the adjoining Mulberry Park development will provide a total of 420 affordable homes. Bath and North East Somerset's Council has said that the quantum of affordable homes proposed across the two sites would ensure that all existing residents of the Fox Hill Estate can be accommodated in the immediate area. Um, I know that I'm going to be meeting with the Honourable Lady uh, uh, shortly uh, before the recess, uh, and I'm sure uh, we can discuss issues around social housing in more detail uh, then as well. But of course, these communities know that their local area better than anyone, and it therefore makes sense that planning decisions are made at a local level wherever possible. And it was on that basis, Madam Deputy Speaker, that Secretary of State, after careful consideration, decided not to call in the application at the Fox Hill Estate. What is clear, Madam Deputy Speaker, is that ultimately the only way of fixing the broken housing market is to build more homes cross tenure and encouraging a more diverse range of players into the market. That is why we're backing small and medium-sized builders to grow, uh, and uh, there was more money for this in the, in the budget, supporting housing associations and local authorities to get building, encouraging more uh, 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 builders into the build-to-rent sector, and of course championing high standards in terms of quality and design. One of the biggest concerns that our constituents have when it comes to new homes being built is they often feel that there is not accompanying infrastructure to support the new housing. And that is why the Chancellor in the Budget committed to a further £2.7 billion to the Housing Infrastructure Fund, taking the total to £5 billion. This will help local authorities, uh, local areas unlock development through the provision of vital infrastructure. And of course, we want to see local authorities working together to champion new housing. And it's therefore encouraging to hear that the four 
local planning authorities in the west of England, where the Honourable Ladies' constituency is based, are working together to produce a joint plan to deliver the homes needed in the area. And I do hope more authorities will take their lead and cooperate to meet their housing needs. So, Madam Deputy Speaker, in conclusion, we are taking action on all fronts to get Britain building as never before, with a focus on social housing, action that has been welcomed by the sector and is delivering real results, more families in safe, secure homes of their own, more people who can put down roots and build stronger communities. And I know that is what the Honourable Lady wants to see. It's also what I want to see, and I'm pleased to say that we are on our way to delivering this. The question is that this House do now adjourn. As many as are of that opinion say aye, Aye. the ayes have it.